So just a little disclaimer about this video. So I kind of edited it a little bit wrong. But I, I want to mention that anytime that I mention anorexia as a, as a use for stimulant type drugs, what I really mean is weight loss. So if there's any confusion about that, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes I get my papers mixed up. So uh, yeah, anytime, like I said, anytime I say anorexia, just think of it as a diet or, waiting lo or a weight loss pill. Welcome to today's video. We're outside here getting some nature in. Today I'm going to be talking about a, a medicine that I find really interesting that has been uh, discontinued in the market for a lot of uh, countries in, in the United States. So that substance is called phenmetrazine. Uh, this drug was first synthesized in 1952, but like I said, was discontinued in uh, the late 70s or possibly the 80s. I wasn't sure on the exact number on that. Um, historically, because you might wonder, like, what, what is this drug? What was it medically used for? Well, historically, it was used for a while to treat anorexia. And um, we had a really faint understanding of ADHD back then due to like the crossover between different disorders so I'd imagine it'd be kind of put in that class too but it's liability for abuse is uh, very high so I'm not sure how that would go over today um, so it was used to treat anorexia for about 20 years um, it is chemically a substituted amphetamine stimulant so what that means is that it, it acts very similar to uh, amphetamines, dextroamphetamine, methamphetamines, things like that. It's going to be a central nervous system stimulant. It's going to cause the release of dopamine, norepinephrine, and it has a weak effect on serotonin. So those catecholamines, dopamine and norepinephrine, are the main players here for this drug. And it causes a release from your adrenic receptors which obviously makes it more stimulating uh, for a lot of people. Um, it was also found that the dextroamphetamine and phenmetrazine, when used in combination, uh, was better. There was more weight loss, I want to say, than just uh, phenmetrazine alone. So combining dextroamphetamine and phenmetrazine, um, there was more uh, weight loss with the two combined. Um, and something that's very interesting about this substance to me is that it's a stimulant, right? And it has a large documented history of abuse and, rec and recreational abuse. So it has a lot of recreational effects and it can be extremely addictive. So that's why it was kind of pulled off the market. Like in Sweden, they banned it I think in like 1964 or something like that and then the US followed suit and many other countries started to pick up on sort of the recreational effects and the addiction that comes along with using uh, phenmetrazine. So like I said it has a long history of abuse and you know, recreational abuse. It's very addictive and this is where it gets interesting to me. Um, there are quite a few descriptions of from people that lived through this drug in the era of the 60s and 70s that describe the effects, which I find really interesting since this drug hasn't been around in a numerous amount of years, we can go back and we can get some history from people that took it. You know, thankfully someone wrote that down. You know, that's why I always encourage people to keep a journal of your experiences because maybe one day something you take will be illegal and you could reflect on that and be like, okay, this was what it was like when I took it. I, I'm reading it in my notebook and that's just a cool thing to have. It's kind of like a relic uh, in my opinion. But uh, back to the uh, video on phenmetrazine. So one report suggests, it was by a woman, one report suggests that it is the most euphoric and arousing of all stimulants. So at the time, it was the most euphoric and arousing of all stimulants. Um, today we have a lot of other euphoric stimulants that are from different families um, that kind of do similar things like MDMA, lots of substituted phenethylamines that kind of produce uh, arousal. Um, but the, the uh, recreational and abusive effects of this drug quite stunned me when I first actually came across this drug. Um, and uh, I want to read you another uh, kind of, uh, I guess, take on the drug. You know, somebody had to write this down. 
it was actually said to be better than methamphetamine and amphetamine. So you can just imagine that, you know, how powerful those two drugs are. Um, it was said to be better, more euphoric at the time than both of those substances, which tells me that it was, it was a big player in, in the recreational field. You know, people were using it a lot to do things, and, and uh, I'll get to an example of that uh, later in the video. Um, so these reports are really interesting. Like I said, they're very interesting. It kind of gives a, uh, the want and need for this drug. It explains it. Um, so then after it was banned in many countries, some in the 60s and some in countries in Europe, uh, it was banned kind of earlier than the United States. So there was actually so much, you know, I guess reward and drive and want for this certain substance that there was smuggling occurring across a large number of European countries, Germany, Switzerland, lots of those countries. Um, excuse me right here, those are the church bells out here and it will ring till five o'clock since that's the time here. Or it'll ring five times. So just ignore that. Yeah, okay. I think it stopped. Okay, so um, back, to, back to the video, fenmetrazine is what we're talking about here. And like I said, it, its descriptions are fascinating. You know, it's said to be better than certain drugs that we think are very recreational. Um, and though that led it to be taken off the market, of course. Um, but uh, it was really popular in smuggling, as I was kind of getting to before that happened. Uh, and that kind of shows you the desire and want for this drug. Like, people were really addicted to this drug. It was also used for um, prolonging your ability to kind of, kind of similar to amphetamines, right? Like, if you use amphetamines recreationally or methamphetamine rec recreationally, it's kind of used for endurance, right? So if you have, like, ADHD... It's not going to respond in the same way as somebody who doesn't have ADHD um, or those certain cluster of problems. So, uh, yeah, it's um, like I said, it, it's it's a very it's an anomalous substance to me, and uh, I can give an example of what I just talked about. So, during the '60s, uh, the Beatles. I, I don't know if anyone here knows the history of the Beatles, but when they first came out, they had to do so many ridiculous amounts of shows. I mean, the demand for the Beatles was in high regard. And I say that because I just made the point that it's used for endurance and capability and to stay awake longer and to focus your attention. That was also recreationally what it was used for. So um, the Beatles used it. So the Beatles are documented to have used fenmetrazine back in the day. Um, John Lennon and Paul McCartney were confirmed users of this drug. John Lennon was a little bit heavier of a user but Paul, Paul McCartney was a little bit of a light user, but they all kind of uh, use that drug to keep up with their rigorous touring schedule. And some other bands did that too. i um, not too familiar with any sources on other bands that do that, but I imagine there was a lot of stress on certain musicians, political figures, certain people like presidents, certain like that. So I think you know, a lot of people could have used that behind the scenes as a uh, method of keeping themselves alert, focused, and just have better acuity on all aspects of the senses. Um, another thing that I'd like to talk about is uh, Jack Ruby. So I'm talking about the JFK assassination here. And I'm not, I'm not going to get into the conspiracy theories about it, trust me. Um, you know, I don't want to talk about that right now. This is just a specific instance of uh, fenmetrazine use that I found interesting in history. So, you know, you know the story as JFK was riding in his motorcade. Lee Harvey, Lee Harvey Oswald, I'm going with the official report here. Lee Harvey Oswald fired three shots at the president, killed him instantly, and kind of ran out of the building. And he got into a number of scraps. I'm just kind of setting the stage here. He got a number of, you know, scraps with the cops and tried to escape. He killed a cop too. Um, and eventually he was captured. And they were trying to arraign him and, and bring him down. Uh, and kind of interrogate him and talk about it, you know, put him in jail. That's what they wanted. They wanted intelligence from the guy who just killed Kennedy. So there's this guy named Jack Ruby who um, actually assassinated Lee Harvey Oswald, who shot Kennedy before he could, while he was walking with the police. He came out point blank really fast and shot Lee Harvey Oswald and killed him. So at that time he was silenced. The police couldn't, or the FBI, police, CIA couldn't ask him anything. So I just found that uh, Jack Ruby is an interesting case because he is documented to have used fenmetrazine on that day. 
and a lot of other days in his life. Uh, his personality was described as like rigid, very kind of money driven, you know, he was very driven, something like that. Um, but I think it's very interesting that this drug ties to a certain high profile uh, thing that happened in the United States. Um, so there's a, there's a picture of Jack Ruby um, at the exact moment that he shot Lee Harvey Oswald, again, the killer of Kennedy, um, where he is like clutching his chest, Lee Harvey Oswald is clutching his chest. And it's such a good photo that it won the Pulitzer Prize uh, for photography. And uh, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of history about that. I thought this was a super interesting substance that was like around for about 20 years, 25 years, and created a lot of uh, problems recreationally, a lot of good things recreationally. But at the same time, it wasn't a uh, long-term usable drug uh, to go on a diet with or to treat anorexia was what they medically call it. Um, and it was getting abused in the United States uh, a lot. So eventually it became so hard to get it that um, amphetamines were kind of introduced to the United States and it kind of knocked, knocked this drug off the market. Um, not off the market, but it kind of knocked uh, this drug. So if you can't find a drug, then you're going to go to a substitute. And it's similar to amphetamine, like I said earlier. So if you can't find the drug, then you're going to go to the other simplest choice, which was amphetamine. So amphetamine became the drug of choice after this was discontinued. So you saw a lot of amphetamines coming into the United States. Um, and that was kind of the, the after effects of uh, phenmethazine, phenmetrazine, sorry. Um, so I just found that this was an interesting drug to talk about. Um, I was going through the literature and I recently discovered this, this drug and it piqued my interest because, uh, it, you know, it was used in a lot of high profile situations and I imagine it was used more than I know to shape our culture. Um, and also the short lived time that it was out on the market. I think that that's very interesting and I, I'm glad some people wrote down what they experienced. That's what I encourage y'all to do on this, on this uh, channel is, uh, if you ever have any experience with a substance, journal it, write it down. It could be important in the future. Um, but anyway, I, I think that's where I'll end the video today. Um, sorry for the church bells and the, all the other stuff going on around my apartment, but we're out here in nature having a great time. And yeah, that's, that's been my video today. Uh, and like I said, it's phenmetrazine. If you want to do some, uh, your own research, look that baby up because it's very, an interesting stimulant that was used. So I think that's where I'll end the video today. Uh, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you learned something. And if you like what you see, leave a like and a comment and I will get back to you. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for listening.